The Kraft Foods Company, makers of Kraft Quality Foods, presents Harold Perry as the Great Gildersleeve. How would you like to win $6,000 in cold cash or any one of the more than 1,300 other cash prizes in Parquet Margarine's great $50,000 Name My Song contest? It's one of the easiest and most exciting contests in radio, and it's open to listeners in the United States, Canada, and Hawaii. Hear all about it in our next announcement. And now, The Great Gildersleeve, brought to you by the makers of Parquet, the margarine millions prefer because it tastes so good. That's P-A-R-K-A-Y. Parquet margarine, made by Kraft. Well, it's late afternoon in Summerfield. The big round October sun is setting, and the great gilder sleeve is homeward bound. Uh, uh, by George, after a full day at the office, there's nothing like getting home to the family. Well, here comes little Leroy on his bicycle. Hiya! Look, no hands! Leroy, look out! Ah! Oop, right through Bullard's hedge. I knew it. Ah! Oh, for goodness sake. Are you all right, Leroy? Ah, I skinned my knee. Ah! You're always skinning your knees. Let me see it, my boy. Ah! Nothing serious, fortunately. Just a small scratch on your knee. You mean there's no blood? Yeah. <laughs> no, Leroy, and don't sound so disappointed Sometimes I think you try to have accidents Why can't you be sane and level-headed like Marjorie? Who, me? Yes, you, the idea of riding no hands Your sister would never do a thing like that Oh, yeah? Look what's coming around the corner Oh, oh Marjorie, confound it I'm going to talk to that girl Get up, Leroy <laughs> Marjorie, where did she go? She's upstairs, Miss Gilsley. Oh, hello, Bertie. I'm pressing her jacket so she can go out again. Out again? She just got home. Oh, Miss Marjorie, sure having herself a time since she started college. All she does is come in and go out again, in again, out again. Scampering here, scooting there, run, run. She's really flying. Yeah, so I've noticed. Hello, Anki. Bertie, is my jacket pressed? Sure is, Miss Marjorie. Put it on while it's hot. Yep. <laughs> Marjorie, I want to have a talk with you. Well, I haven't time right now, Unky. How about Sunday? Sunday? But this is only Friday. Well, I know, Unky, but I've got a lot of things to do. I've got to meet the gang, and the big game is tomorrow afternoon, and we're having a victory dance tomorrow night. I'm in a whirl. Hi, level head. <laughs> what? What an example for a little kid. Yeah, no. <laughs> but look, you said... Never mind. Marjorie, what's come over to you since you started college? I was just pointing you out to Leroy as a good example, and you come skidding around the corner in that awful car. Who's that driving? That was Bronco. Bronco? I thought he drove like a wild horse. <laughs> He's a maniac, that's what he is. He's not a maniac, Unky. He's on the football team. Oh, my goodness. Yeah, second string maniac. <laughs> Stop it, Leroy. He's a very careful driver, Unky. If he wasn't, I wouldn't go with him to the victory dance at the Grass Lake Inn tomorrow night. Grass Lake? Now, see here, Marjorie, I don't want any youngster of mine running up to Grass Lake on a Saturday night. Well, Unky, I'm not a youngster anymore. Who's chaperoning this party? Why do we need chaperones? We're in college. Well, I was in college once myself. These things should have chaperones. Uh, I mean... <clears throat> <laughs> but, Unky, nowadays students manage their own activities. Everything's under the supervision of the student council. Oh, and who supervises the student council? Well, the president of the council. And who's the president? Bronco. Bronco. <laughs> that does it. Marjorie, your old uncle, hates to do this, but he's going to put his foot down. You're not going. Unky. You go out with a crowd like that, you never know what's going to happen. It's irresponsible kids like Bronco in those fast cars that cause all the trouble today. Uncle Mort, that's not true. I've got to draw the line someplace, and by George, I'm drawing it. The Grass Lake, Lake dance is out. All right. If Grass Lake is out, so is the game tomorrow. What? I'll just stay home. No, 
tell Marjorie. I didn't say that. If you won't trust me to go to a dance, you shouldn't trust me to go anyplace. Marjorie, wait a minute. <laughs> Little Marjorie. She acts more like a woman every day. <laughs> Marjorie, eat her dinner, Bertie? No, sir. I took a plate up to her, but she wouldn't touch it. Hand it to me. I still got room for it. <laughs> Leroy, you've had two helpings already. But, Uncle, I'm a growing boy. Yeah, well, you've grown enough for one day. <laughs> Leroy's still growing, but Miss Marjorie ain't. What? She's already grown up. She's a young lady. Now, Bertie, she's a very young, young lady. She still needs guidance. Yes, sir. Marjorie's at an age where she thinks she knows more than her old uncle. Yes, sir. Well, don't you think I did the right thing, Bertie? More spinach, Mr. Gill, please? <laughs> I bet that's Bronco coming to call on Marjorie. Well, there's nothing wrong with that. Anything to cheer her up. Well, come in, Bronco. Bronco? <laughs> oh, Judge Hooker. <laughs> Thought you were somebody else. Whom were you expecting? A horse? <laughs> <laughs> I got was an old goat. <laughs> Judge, my nerves are bad enough without listening to that cackle. What's wrong, Gildy? Are you worrying about that song you wrote? That's the only thing I'm not worrying about, Horace. If other things around here were going as well as my song, I'd be all right. I dropped in to tell you, Gildy, the secretaries down at the courthouse are all trying to think up titles for it. Well, good. There's an old familiar strain, a haunting refrain. <laughs> I sang it for Miss Upjohn in the filing department. She cried. I'm not surprised. <laughs> Hello, Leroy. Good evening, Bertie. Hi, Judge. Good evening, Judge. Marjorie out this evening, Gilday? No, Judge. Marjorie's up in her room. She won't speak to me. Just because I refuse to let her go racing up the grass lake to that victory dance tomorrow night. Now, wait. Why can't she go? After all, Gilday, we mustn't forget this is a very important occasion for the young people. I'm not arguing about the occasion, Horace. But I object to these irresponsible kids driving fast jalopies way up to Grass Lake. I understand your concern, Gilday. But try to remember when you were in school. You drove a car. I had a Model T sedan. I could go 30 miles an hour with a strong tailwind. <laughs> these jalopies have 28 cylinders. They sound like a B-29. I know, it's a problem. But it might be much wiser, Gildy, to take a more active interest in Marjorie's college life. Join in. Have you thought of going with the kids up to Grass Lake? You mean as a chaperone? Well, you don't have to be so obvious about it. <laughs> you could get a date and go, too. You mean double date? Yeah, you could call it that. Hmm, not a bad idea. What about taking that cute little nurse that you've been squiring lately? Miss Milford? Or won't she take your case? <laughs> <laughs> Don't worry about that, Judge. Come to think of it, it might be a good idea to have a trained nurse up there. By George Horace, I think I'll do it. Good. Let's go down to Peavy's drugstore and celebrate with a lemon phosphate. Yep. <laughs> I can't do it, Judge. I've got to see a nurse about a dance. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> Marjorie, the florist was here this morning. The florist? <laughs> that got her. <laughs> Good morning, my dear. Flowers for you. Oh, I guess they're from Bronco. No, they're from Unky. <laughs> Marjorie? I don't want any flowers. But they're for you to wear to the dance tonight. The dance? You mean I can go? Sure. And you're going to the game this afternoon, too. I'm sorry about last night, my dear. Bertie will press your prettiest dress. You'll wear this pretty corsage... And you'll be the prettiest girl on the floor. Oh, Uncle Mort, thank you. That's all right. And I'm sorry I behaved the way I did, too. Well, uh, let's just forget it, huh? There's no reason why we shouldn't have a good time at the dance tonight. We? Well, uh... <laughs> hey, are you going, Uncle? Of course we're going, Leroy. 
Now, wait a minute, Uncle Mort. What do you mean by we? Well, I thought perhaps... Uncle Mort, if you think we have to have a chaperone... Oh, no, that isn't the idea at all. I thought we'd do something we've never done before. Double date. Double date? Sure, the four of us will be college kids. You and Bronco would like that, wouldn't you? I guess so. Fine. But, Unky, you wouldn't enjoy yourself with a bunch of college kids. Yes, I will. I'll force myself. (laughs) Who are you taking? Taking? Oh, Catherine Milford, the nurse. Some forcing. Leroy. (laughs) I saw her, Unk. (laughs) Woo-woo! That will do, Leroy. A couple of adults are talking something over. (laughs) Well, how about double dating, Margie? Well, Uncle Mort... You like Catherine. She hasn't been out of school long herself. Nursing school... Well, Bronco and I had planned to go with Francie and Skinny. All right. If you don't want to go with your old uncle. Oh, Uncle If you don't want to be seen with me. Well, you know it's not that. It's all right. I don't mind. (laughs) All right, Uncle. You win. Oh, what a sneaky way to chaperone a party. Leroy. Could you use $6,000? Here's how you may win the prize of a lifetime in Parquet Margarine's $50,000 Name My Song contest. Gildersleeve needs a title for his song, the one he'll sing later on in the program. And for the best title sent in, each week for five weeks, Parquet Margarine will award four $1,000 cash prizes, 20 $100 cash prizes, 50 $20 cash prizes, 200 $10 cash prizes, And in addition, a final grand prize of $5,000 extra for the title finally chosen. Your entry may win you a total of $6,000 in cash. You don't need to know a note of music. A single word, just a few at most, may win. Send your title for Gildersleeve's song together with the red end flap from a package of Parquet Margarine to Parquet Margarine, Box 5167, Chicago 77, Illinois. Your food dealer has entry blanks containing complete contest rules and the words of the song. Or use plain paper if you prefer. Be sure to include your own name and address and that of your parquet dealer. Remember, send your entry together with the red end flap of a parquet package to Parquet Margarine, Box 5167, Chicago 77, Illinois. Entries for this week's contest must be postmarked before midnight next Saturday. So hurry, it may be worth $6,000 to you. Well, the great Gildersleeve and his niece Marjorie had opposing views about her attending a college dance up at Grass Lake Inn. The great man didn't get very far until he employed an old strategy. If you can't beat the opposition, join them. Pretty crafty. (laughs) Hello, PV. Hello, Mr. Gildersleeve. (laughs) What can I do for you this afternoon? Well, I don't know exactly, PV. I'm going to a dance tonight up at Grass Lake. Oh, a dance? Well, how about some talcum powder to sprinkle in your shoes? Very soothing. <laughs> no, PV. This is the college victory dance. I'd like to get some pom poms or silly hats. Something with a party spirit. No, you don't have any hats or pom poms. No noisemakers? I have a couple of cap pistols left over from Fourth of July. <laughs> they make quite a noise. Yeah, cap pistols. I don't want any shooting. That's the reason I'm going, to keep this dance safe and sane. Well, if you want to party spirit, Mr. Gildersleeve, I might suggest this book. Book? Yes, it's titled, Droll Remarks and Humorous Replies for All Occasions. Oh, for goodness <laughs> sake. Well, I'm trying. How about several packages of chewing gum, assorted flavors? Young people enjoy that. Is that the best thing you can do, Peavy? Chewing gum? Well, come to think about it, why take anything? Just having a dance can be a lot of fun, if you have girls. I'm not going just for the fun, Peavy. I was a little worried about Marjorie driving up to Grass Lake with those kids in their fast cars. Oh? When a bunch of kids get out like that, they can lose their heads. Need an older person around to balance the boat. I cooked up a clever scheme to get a date and go along. You're taking that pretty little nurse, Miss Milford? Well, yes. (laughs) <laughs> that was clever. <laughs> We're going to sort of chaperone. 
Who's going to chaperone you? <laughs> now, Peavy, you know I don't need a chaperone. Well, I wouldn't say that. Oh. <laughs> Goodbye. Bronco's car, Unky. Oh? <laughs> yeah, that's Bronco's car. Or was Bronco's car. I'll run out and meet him. Yeah, I think I'll go, too. I'm going to look over that contraption. Me, too. Leroy, don't you get too close to it. It may not be dead yet. <laughs> Hi, Marge. Oh, boy, no fenders, no bumpers, no windshield, no hood. And no sense. Uh, Bronco, I want you to meet my uncle How do you do, Mr. Gildersleeve? Well, how do you do, Bronco? I've been wanting to meet you, sir Well, I've been wanting to meet you, too <laughs> And this is my brother, Leroy Hello, big fella Hi I hear you're on the football squad, Bronco Well, second string Second string, eh? Well, that's better no string at all <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, great game, football Oh, did you play football? Uh, I played soccer I was too heavy for football <laughs> Okay, here comes Miss Milford. Huh? Well, my date. Gee, she's keen. Yeah. I hope I haven't kept you waiting. Yeah, not at all, Catherine. You're just in time. Thanks for offering to pick me up, Mr. Gildersleeve, but I thought it would save time if I dressed at the hospital and came right over. I hope I look all right. Do you? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Miss Milford, I'd like to have you meet my niece, Marjorie. How do you do, Miss Milford? And my little nephew, Leroy. <laughs> Nice to know you, Marjorie and Leroy. <laughs> yes, yes. And uh, this is uh, Bronco Thompson. Glad to meet you, Miss Milford. How do you do? I hear your team won this afternoon. Isn't it wonderful? The victory dance should be quite a party now. Yeah, the whole student body went wild after the game. We should have quite a ball. Oh, boy, I'll bet they wrecked the joint. <laughs> <laughs> Catherine, it's a good thing we're going along the chaperone. What's that, Uncle Mort? Mm-hmm. Oh, I said it's uh, good of you to take us uh, instead of going alone. <laughs> oh, we're just tickled that you can go, Mr. Gildersleeve. We wouldn't have it any other way. Neither would I. <laughs> well, I'll back out the old Studebaker children. Let's pile in and be off to Grass Lake. Unky, are we going in that? What? It's a closed car. We'll suffocate. Uh, why don't we go in my car, Mr. Gildersleeve? In that? No, Bronco. Yes, sure. Why don't we? I've always wanted to ride in a car like Bronco's. A lot of my patients have them. No wonder they're patients. <laughs> Come on, Unky. Don't be dull. Sure. As long as we're going to a college dance, let's live. That's precisely what I want to do. <laughs> let's take the Studebaker. Now, Uncle Mort, if you're going to double date, be a good sport. I'm a good sport, Mark. Three against one, Mr. Gildersleeve. Four against one. Go ahead, Unc. Well... With no top, we might get a little cold. I'll be warm enough if you will. Uh, <laughs> well, we'll go under one condition, that I drive. Oh, I don't know. It's pretty tricky. Well, I'll handle it. I'm pretty tricky myself. <clears throat> Come on, let's get in. How do you open the doors? Oh, they're welded shut. You step over. <laughs> Yeah, I'm in too, I guess <laughs> How do you start this thing, Bronco? Oh, uh, see those two wires under the dash? These? Yeah, that's it Hold the wires together and pull up on that rope sticking through the floorboard <laughs> Hold the wires together Pull up on the rope Oh, it's in gear, look out I think i Goodbye, Leroy Now, oh, we're second Are you having a good time, Catherine? A lovely time, Mr. Gildersleeve. Would you care to join me in another cup of fruit punch? Don't you think you'd better save some for the others? Oh, they're busy dancing. Oh, by the way, mustn't forget. I uh, wonder where Marjorie is. Uh, there she is, dancing with Bronco. 
Hmm? Now, Mr. Gildersleeve, he's holding her at least two feet away. Well, I guess that's far enough. I must say, everything is very circumspect at this party. Well, so far. Mm. I think it was very sensible of the student consul to have a motorcycle policeman patrolling the road up here. And you can thank me for that. Oh. I called the police chief this morning. Told him to put his best man out here. He's sending out Eagle Eye McBride. Oh. Well, there's the music again. Seldom I get to dance outside of the hospital. You mean you dance at the hospital? Oh, yes. Dancing is a definite aid to many types of patients in convalescence. Well, let's convalesce. <laughs> <laughs> I'd love to. La la di la di Well, this is more like it. Mm. Ah, oh, I love to hear you sing. <laughs> Perhaps I'd better hold you a little closer so you can hear me better. <laughs> I beg your pardon. What? Oh, Bronco. Uh, tag dance? No, I'm sorry, Mr. Gildersleeve. No singing on the dance floor. No singing? Well, if all the gang did it, things could get pretty rowdy. Student council rule. Oh, yes, student council rule. And you fellas are doing a fine job, Bronco. Oh, thank you, sir. They've thought of everything, haven't they? Yeah, I'll say. Not very exciting in here, is it? Let's go out on the terrace. Do you think it'll be more exciting out there? Well, there's always something exciting about walking through French doors. <laughs> After you. Thank you, Mr. Gildersleeve. Well, what do you know? There's a big moon out here. Hmm. Isn't it big? Silhouettes that tree like a fluoroscope. Yeah, fluoroscope? Catherine, I'm afraid your mind is still at the hospital. <laughs> Why don't you let yourself go? Call me Throckmorton. I'd like to, Throckmorton. <laughs> <laughs> uh, why don't we sit here on the bench behind this box hedge, huh? All right, but... There doesn't seem to be anybody else out here. Anything wrong with that? Jock Martin, you're holding my hand. Yep. You may as well know, Catherine. I think you're pretty nice. Well, there's something you may as well know, too. Oh? Your pulse is too fast. <laughs> There are many kinds of pulses, Throckmorton, Mr. Gildersleeve. Now, Catherine, let's not try to diagnose. In some pulses, there are signs of aortic insufficiency. Catherine, how about a little kiss? And huh? there's a difference between the systolic or maximum and a, a, a diastolic or minimum pressures. Catherine. Yes, Throckmorton. Catherine. <clears throat> I beg your pardon. <laughs> It's Bronco again. I'm sorry, Mr. Gildersleeve. There's a rule that all couples must remain on the dance floor. Let's go home. <laughs> hey, it's kind of windy without a windshield, huh? Think I'll put on Bronco's beanie. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> It was nice of Bronco to let us have his car. Well, Bronco and Marjorie can come home with Francie and Skinny. That's what they wanted to do in the first place. Now everybody's doing what they want to do. Yeah. I like to hear you sing. They shouldn't have hushed you up on the dance floor. Now, by George, I can sing out here. <laughs> sing your song. I'll close my eyes and listen. <laughs> There's an old familiar strain A haunting refrain That takes me back to days of yore I see a chapel on the hill Spring's first daffodils Reflected in the mill pond from the shore I recall in memory Two names on a tree Our first kiss in that old canoe And though we've drifted far apart This song lives in my heart It's a melody of love 
Morton. They don't know what they missed at the dance. Well, the student council has its little rules and regulations. They're level-headed kids, every one of them. Certainly. Uh, but by George, I can't blame them for driving around in these jalopies. Certainly is a lot of fun, if you use some sense about it, of course. <laughs> Look at this little rascal go. <laughs> it's blowing my hair. Yeah, isn't it fun? Uh-huh. <laughs> Brock Morton, what's that noise? Noise? I don't hear any noise. Hey, yes, I do. Oh, good heavens. It's the police. Oh, how do you stop this thing? (laughs) Sensitive brakes. (laughs) Where's the fire, freshman? Eagle Eye McBride. Uh, No fire, officer. We're just on our way home from Grass Lake, officer. You college kids are getting bigger and bigger. Huh? Gonna have to give you a ticket, bub. Bub? You were doing 60. But it's irresponsible kids like you and these fast cars that cause all the trouble today. That's an old familiar strain. Win up to $6,000 in cash. Send your name for Gildersleeve's song together with the red end flap of a package of parquet margarine, your own name and address, and that of your parquet dealer to Parquet Margarine, Box 5167, Chicago 77, Illinois. 274 big cash prizes for entries postmarked before midnight this Saturday. The contest is open to listeners in the United States, Canada, and Hawaii. So hurry, everybody. Think what you could do with $6,000 in cash. <laughs> Don't forget, folks, you can get a six-inch vinyl line plastic recording of my song simply by sending 25 cents in cash and the red end flap of a package of Parquet Margarine to Parquet Margarine, Box 5167, Chicago 77, Illinois. Now, this is not part of the contest, but having the record may give you ideas for a prize-winning name, and it's a nice souvenir of this program. For a quarter and a piece of cardboard, how can you lose? <laughs> Don't forget your return address. By the way, if you'd like to hear what the record sounds like, I'll play part of it for you. The part I was going to sing when that cop stopped us. Bertie, start the Victrola. Yes, Mr. Gilsleeve. In my reverie, it seems a summer moonbeams or fields that wander on and on to where a lane that we called ours hid among the flowers. And welcome cooling showers before the dawn. There's a lilac trellised gate where each night we'd wait to breathe the fragrance in the air. And so wherever I may roam, my thoughts will return to home for I know that love and you are there Isn't science wonderful? Good night, folks. (laughs) Be sure to listen in next Wednesday and every Wednesday for the further adventures of The Great Gildersleeve. Here's a taste test that counts. Try any meat without mustard. Then add a golden dab of Kraft prepared mustard to your next bite. Taste the difference. There are two kinds of Kraft mustard, you know. Salad mustard, delicately spiced for those who like their mustard mild. Or Kraft prepared mustard with snappy horseradish added. Have both on hand. For remember this, when you add a little mustard, you add a lot of tang. Get Kraft prepared mustard. Stay tuned now for Break the Bank on NBC.